Today I'm going to show some of my modifications to the case for the smart hand controller, the OnStep smart hand controller. Let's see if we can get this to focus. So this is the ESP32 based smart hand controller. It has the five-way button in the middle and I've already got one of my 3D printed buttons on there. Um, has two of the RJ12 connectors on there, six, six wire connectors soldered on. You could be slightly lower profile without these, but you would only save a couple millimeters without these. So, um, wire it in here. So I'm using the box designed by Roman Hooger. Found this file out on Thingiverse. And as I'm going through my on step, I am also learning 3D printing at the same time. So I think 3D printing is a great way to make a lot of these custom boxes and enclosures, but there is a little bit of a learning curve. So first thing I'll notice is printing the exact file that Roman had. I could not get the RJ12 connectors into the box because they're on two different axes, one on the side and one on the bottom. And the box is just a little bit tight to get that to drop in and I didn't really want to push hard so I couldn't I tried for a long time wiggling could not get that to drop in tried whittling away with some sandpaper and then finally a wood chisel and unsuccessful there still you can see I had this print a little bit too hot so there's a lot of stringing and you can see a little bit of a blemish on one side here so this was at 205C for a PL, PLA filament. I found better results when I reprinted it at 200C. Almost no stringing. Nice smooth sides pretty much everywhere. So Roman did a really nice job. I made a few mods to his file. I adjusted the depth of these uh, cutouts in the bottom to match my RJ12 ports. I went in and because I had so much trouble getting the part in, I made myself a little bit of a clearance. So I pushed this wall back. So this is my first time modifying an STL file. And you can see I had had some success, but if you notice down here in the corner, yeah, there's a fragment that I was unable to really get rid of. And it was unimportant. I just gave myself enough clearance. I also went in, gave myself a nice big... Uh, blend a fillet around this USB port in case I ever need it. I don't know what USB cable I'm going to be using. And I really like that he has labels for each of the ports. So I'll show you with the extra clearance. Maybe we'll do it this way. So you can see with the extra clearance, the board just drops in pretty nicely. So the next thing I had to modify was the width of these ports. So I measured mine and I think I go with a 0.6 millimeters clearance on either side or the hole should be about 1.2 millimeters larger than the actual jack. So the next thing is the top plate I printed. And I notice that the, but the buttons that were installed on mine actually come into that top plate. So the original buttons that shipped with the uh, the file looks something like this nice simple cylinder with a cutout in the bottom but they had a really tall collar here this collar was too tall for my setup i'll show you what that looks like so the button drops in but of that tall collar you can see that's definitely too tall so the first thing I tried was just uh, remodeling this and this has really gotten my fusion 360 skills better so I can model a cylinder so I just made that collar shorter same size drop it in but even with that collar I was unable to get this to sit flush. So I went down to the, that collar is a 1.2 millimeter. 
And that's about as thin as I like to print if I want any strength in my material. Otherwise, it gets really flexible. So, the other thing I didn't like when I first printed this was the pattern, the finish pattern on the top. I thought, I'd, oh, let's do some concentric circles instead of having the straight lines in there. And the Cura Slicer decided it would start printing those concentric circles in the center rather than in the middle or on the edge. So while it looks nice on the top of the button, it's not really controlled and kind of lucky that it actually finished printing with that wad of filament there. So the concentric button was not successful. So those were trash. So where I ended up going is I decided I needed to recess my buttons on the bottom side here. So I took this file and since I had learned how to modify STLs, I put a step in there and then modified my buttons as well. So it's going to be hard to see. I'll post my files so others can see them. There's a 1.2 millimeter step with a big chamfer and this button also has a big chamfer on it so this should fit better on top of these round buttons. And so that's what we're really looking for is that chamfer is closer to the radius and sits down on the button more than in the past. So I just did this by eye with the uh, trial and error method, but what you'll see, these buttons drop in nicely. They're flush with the back of the plate. Because there's a nice chamfer, they're self-centering. I have my four directional buttons and my two speed buttons down here. And I already have installed the gray five-way buttons. So let's see if we can keep that upside down, drop it on, and that's what it looks like. And that is going to sit flush. The so nice thing is with it flush, Testing all the buttons, it works. I don't like the gap around the five-way in the middle. Um, maybe if I ever do another one, I'll just get rid of the five-way and just use the four buttons and a center press. But the controller that I had that uh, George Cushing pre-assembled for me had the five-way, so we're going to use the five-way. I kind of like the joystick at times as well. So with that, we have our ports sticking through the sides everything lines up there i just had to adjust the size of the ports i have clearance on the inside to actually drop the board in and i've got buttons that work with this so the last thing i had to do was get my led or oled screen to be able to drop in and i'm still having some fun getting the right fit so i actually ended up having to print this bezel twice for the 1.3 inch screen everything printed out nicely the first time I was just about 0.3 millimeters undersized on the hole so after some measurement with calipers I got this reassembled it's a nice super light press fit or a nice nice light slip now let's get this installed so we've got a four pin connector four pin connector right here so we're just going to make sure those line up now I can feel they're aligned that drops in that should finish our assembly I'm going to run this home with some 440 screws I believe these should be long enough
Let's just double check that they're long enough to go through the bezel up top here too. I like the look of the socket head cap screw. Ooh, those are gonna be just a little bit short. Uh, it's getting one or two threads. I had these laying around. Stainless steel, 440. Maybe not ideal, but it's what I had. Okay, I'll get these run home. Here we have the finished box. If these screws ever loosen, I'll go with longer ones, but I wanted to use the uh, socket head cap screw style rather than I also have button head or pan head Phillips, but I like the look of the, the hex better. That socket head cap screw is a little nicer look. So here we go. Everything looks like it fits. Buttons are kind of loose, but uh, that's how they're going to be. I think it's going to work.